guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm War again. You're watching Gas Tax, the channel that's here to help you figure out how to build your dream garage. And right behind me is my 2005 TW200. The last couple of videos, I have been outfitting this with some accessories for some adventure coming up this winter. So if you haven't checked out those videos, be sure to check them out. But today, we're going over the handlebars. We're replacing the handlebars, we're replacing the grips, uh, we're putting some handle guards on there. So, without further ado, let's jump right into it. So if you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. And if you're a long time subscriber, always good to have your back. Today we are working on the TW200. If you haven't checked out my other videos where I have changed the front forks, added some bigger foot pegs, added a rear rack, be sure to check those out. Also, I have about four more videos or five more videos left in this series. So if you're thinking about upgrading your TW200, be sure to check those out. So I've had these handlebars around since I built my 2015 Triumph Scrambler. I'll leave a picture below. And I wanted to uh, actually put them to use now. I've heard these handlebars are weaker. Uh, these seem a lot sturdier as that bike was also maybe three times heavier than this bike. So I'm deciding to replace the handlebars with these black ones. I also think it will match the bike pretty good. And it also has a better stance for me. Uh, then I'm going to upgrade the grips on the bike, put some handle guard uh, protections on there. And then also, in one of my last videos, I installed some uh, ditch lights. I need to mount the switch. Alright guys, so let's start off with removing the handle grips. Normally, you can just cut them off. Sometimes you can peel them off. I'm just going to cut these off. They are pretty worn and I'm not going to use them. So I'm just going to grab a Zacto, run a line through it, and they'll just pop right off. One down. Now when removing the throttle side grip, be sure to use a Zacto knife pretty lightly because normally there's a plastic uh, sleeve to make the throttle move and you don't want to crack or cut that up. So just do a light little cut along there uh, so you don't go too deep and it shouldn't be a problem. Now that the grips are off, let's go ahead and remove the brakes and rear view mirrors. One thing you want to make sure when you're doing this is you do not want to strip the screw heads. Uh, if they've really seized up, try get some uh, anti-seize spray, spray it on there, let it sit a little, because it would be a pain to get these out. Whenever you take off the front brake uh, lever here, I always like to make sure when I rest this, I rest the brake fluid reservoir vertically. However I can, it may take a couple zip ties to make sure it stays vertically, but that's what I like to do so nothing gets out of whack there. And with that, all we have to do is remove the turn signal uh, switch here and this kill switch and then the throttle. And then we should be good to go to put on the new handles. When possible, I just like to put the screws that I've removed back into the actual components. That way I don't have to worry about losing them and I know exactly where they all go. Because nine times out of ten, they're all different sizes. Even on something like this, sometimes the front size is different to the back size. It's just much easier to remember how to do it. How many of you guys treat your mouth as an extra pocket when it comes to nuts and bolts? I do it all the time. Um, I don't know if it's just me or what, but yeah, anyways. Alrighty, now that everything is loose on the handlebars, all you gotta do is slide this throttle off if it's loose enough. Looks like I gotta loosen it a bit more. I'll just separate it and voila, all done. So it's a much taller rise for me, you know, hard to bend over this big belly of mine. And then it actually sticks out a bit further. So it'll be interesting to see how these work, but one thing to keep in mind, if you look over here, you can see there's two holes. These holes actually gripped down on the, the throttle there, so I may have to drill some holes in here. Um, since this bike is not really a high performance bike, I'm not worried about drilling holes. Normally, if uh, it was a high performance bike, I would never drill holes in the handle. I would just shave off that nipple 
and then uh, make it fit. But let's put these babies on. All right guys, after reviewing the situation, I have figured out I'm just gonna drill a hole for that nipple. I will show you up close what I'm talking about. That way uh, it will, won't move with off-roading. Off-roading is obviously more aggressive on the bike, so you don't want the throttle slipping or the throttle assembly slipping on the handlebar. That would be a pain. And since this is meant to be my rescue bike, I don't need my rescue bike to be rescued. So let's jump into mocking that and figuring out what size drill hole we need to drill. All right, so let me show you what I'm working with. You see this little nipple here that actually sets into the handlebars. So that way it doesn't slip around when you are uh, using the throttle. So I have marked everything here on the bar. It's very hard to see. The mark is right here. I'm gonna drill that hole uh, and then get installing. Let's put uh, this on again loosely and see if the hole lines up. Perfect. So now I'm just gonna loosely put this handlebar on here again. Uh, make sure all the wires are long enough or things need to be uh, relocated to uh, fit. And then we can start cranking everything down. Now let's get to accessorizing. What we got to do with accessories is we got to install uh, the brake or the, the handle protections if they fit. Sometimes they don't and you got to replace these. What I did on my DR is just cut off these knobs right here uh, because actually you don't need them. Um, they do help your hand from slipping off, but this will also. So let's do that and then put the new grips on. So I have just double checked everything fits. Uh, make sure everything has enough wire, make sure there's no pinched wires. So before we put on the actual, the hand guards, we got to put on the grip. Some guys use um, some spray. I don't like to use spray because then if the spray doesn't dry, then it will never actually uh, settle on here. There is a hole on the other side of here. Uh, this hole needs to be bigger for the handle guards. If you feel like drilling that out, you can. But basically, it's just a slow process to get this on. Windex does dry uh, or evaporate quicker. So if you want to use Windex, that is an option. There you go. It does take some time, you know, maybe a minute or two. Uh, it is a bit tight, but it does work out. All right, so I'm gonna use some soapy water on this side. I'm not too worried about it slipping because it is actually on that throttle there. So it will work out better. All right, that's nice. All right, perfect, that is done. And now onto the handle guard protection. So with the handle bar protection, um, they, are, they are side directional, if you will, however you say that. Uh, so just figure out which side works better with your bars. They don't actually tell you left or right, but they aren't identical. So what you have to do is actually mount this uh, bracket onto the handlebar down here. And then you have to cut a hole open at the end of your handle grip here. And that's where you put in this expander bolt. This is similar to a concrete bolt. Basically, when you put it in the hole there and you tighten it down, this expands and grips into the handlebar. So, let's do the driver's side. The driver's side. Both of the sides of the driver's side, I guess. But let's do the driver's side and then we'll move on to the passenger side. All right, so what I just found out is these bars actually have a nut bolted in or welded inside. So these won't work, um, unfortunately, because they're nice and thick. This is the size of the, the thread inside, so luckily I had these laying around. But these will actually be secure. Uh, they won't be as strong as other ones, but hey, these will work. So let's put these on. So these actually have a space for any cables you have going through. The edges are pretty sharp. I'm going to just sand them down a little. That way the whatever chafing uh, doesn't occur. And then I'll actually see what cables I can fit in there. All right, I'm able to fit one of the two cables through there, so I may as well do that. That way there's less cables bouncing around. Let's tighten it all up. All right, this side's all sturdy. Let's start on the other side. 
Before we get started on the other side, as you can see here, I cranked this one down. It is nice and tight. It's compressing the actual grip. So to show you what I've done here, I've put the bolt through here. Now I'm going to put the spacer and then I'm going to actually put a nut here. With this nut, it will make sure that whenever I tighten uh, this down into the handlebar, this won't compress on the actual throttle and make it sticky. So let's tighten this down. Well guys, there you have it. I've upgraded the handlebars to a different stance. I put new grips on and some uh, handlebar guards. And then I've also put my uh, wired, my floodlight or my ditch light switch. So everything looks great. I love it all. I can't wait to feel it on the actual while sitting on it, but I got a lot more projects to do. So if you like what you see here, be sure you leave me a like, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, I'll see you then. Thank you.